Welcome back, Smite fans, to our second set of the night. This one between Corvidae and Team Pandemonium. Teams kind of staring at opposite fates here. Pandemonium looking to go to land and defend their title as regional champions, while Corvidae, bottom of the ladder, yet to pick up a win. I am Husey. Joining me for this set is Parathis. Parathis, how are you doing tonight? Doing pretty well. Pandemonium versus Corvidae, as you said. One, sitting comfortably at the top, Corvidae, yet to win a game. I mean, the upsets that we've seen in last week and this week, uh, with Alpha Sydney and other teams as well. Hopefully Corvidae can stay on that grind and hopefully take a game off of Pandemonium and go for a split today. I mean, hope, hopefully they just pick up a, a game somewhere at all. Uh, you know, this team, unfortunate circumstances have led them to be in the Pro League uh, with the disbandment of Tainted Minds in week number three. Uh, they, they've fought every week since then, but have just seemingly been unable to, to capitalize on the effort they've put in. We're going to go ahead and get into picks and bans here in just a second here. We saw a bit, uh, a few curious picks last last game there, you know, with a raw mid. Uh, Loved it. Just kind of the janky play style we've come to expect from Alpha Sydney. I, I expect a more vanilla comp from both of these teams. Corvide, you know, maybe they need to look for something a little bit more spicy to, to help themselves get a win, but maybe just don't have the confidence to pull off something like Alpha Sydney does. Uh, Ratatoska here, banned away by Team Pandemonium. And the Seuss Knight in return for Corvide. Pretty strong bans. I mean, as you said, Ratatoska last game, uh, played three times, I believe, and then won every single game. And then other times it's just banned. You can't let it through. Even though Corvide are, you know, as you said, down the bottom, haven't won a game. Even if they get a strong pick like Ratatoska, then they're going to dominate on it. So banning it away is very strong. Pandemonium actually banning away the Ryzen. Their first pick and Ochita plays a pretty strong Ryzen. Oh, well, they, they recognize that it, it'll get banned away by Corvide as well. So now they're kind of seeing, you know, what Corvide is going to ban away here. And then that kind of tells them what Corvide is looking to draft. They ban away the Barkas here. So that shows that they're uh, a bit wary of Erratic's Barkas. It's what he is noted for his uh, Barkas play. Uh, Pandemonium now looking for their first pick. Uh, I expect we might see something like a Ho Yi first pick. Well, it's going to be a Nemesis. Nemesis and Ho Yi okay. proving to be two of the more popular picks here in OCE. You know, last game we saw Alpha Sydney pick up um, a Ho Yi with the first pick. So the, the Nemesis still first pick doesn't doesn't surprise me that much. Um, Maxon actually is making um, a change to the jungle for Team Pandemonium. Sporks has actually uh, stepped down into a sub position for the squad or stepped away from the squad, something like that. There hasn't been a, a big announcement about it, but Maxon is now in the jungle role. Uh, 14 Pandemonium, sub floor returning to his AD carry position. Sobek and Najar picked up here by Corbinet. Clearly favoring the Sobek. It's it's a good pick, especially with the Najar. Uh, they have a lot of setup with each other. I would have liked to see if they're going to pick something and maybe go for an Awilish with the Sobek. Awilish is very, very strong, does a lot of early game damage, and of course with the Sobek, just has that synergy. Poye Odin locked in for Pandemonium, so the, the sun's in the dome is all I'm thinking right now, Hughes. I, we, we know that Ochita plays Zeus. That could be a Sunder Thunderdome. I, I love the Ho Yi Odin pickup, particularly the Odin pickup with the Colvaday's comp. Because they've got a Naja, they've got a Sobek, two gods that don't have escapes other than dashes. So they're going to be locked down. Odin with his new passive is extremely mobile. Oh, yeah. a big fan of the Odin, you know, since his days that he was a jungler. Scylla now picked up for Corvidae, so their team strategy seems to be just basically, uh, you know, set up for the Scylla. Zeus banned away, you know, you were just talking about the zeus Oda com combination there. Corvidae just don't want to deal with it. Exactly said. Pandemonium now need to ban away. Now, unless that's going to be a Sobek in this solo role, KO still needs to pick a god. Now, we were just talking about this before, that KO... 50% of the time he's played, uh, out of the eight games he's played at Cabracken. Now, with the removal of the Pebble Potion and also uh, a bit of a nerf to his damage, we won't see him picked too often. I would like to still see KO play it, though. I mean, Cabracken is still extremely strong late game. Rama banned for Panda, as well as really focusing away from Ochita here, banning the Zeus and the uh, the Yanis. Uh, I like the Ram takeaway. Ram can be a late game carry, and now with games going to the, the later stages more often than not with the removal of Power Pot, uh, it, it just kind of makes sense for Pandemonium to take that one away. Janus is just something Ochita pulls out when he needs to win a game. Uh, we've seen him do it multiple times. Arnher now banned away from Pandemonium, so they're restricting the options for just Speedy, the AD carry of Corvidae. He's going to go ahead and pick up Neath here. Uh, we saw Laney play it last game, and you know, Neath's got decent <laughs> wave clear, but once he hit towards the mid-late stages of the game, unless you're very far ahead, is pretty ineffectual. 
Uh, she turns into sort of like an ult bot, really. You're just using it for the stun, maybe uh, baiting the beads, which is good on their comp because Nezhar is going to be setting up so much as well as Sobek. So baiting away the beads so the ultimate can be assured for Nezhar is a very strong pickup. Kumbakana and Ra locked in for Panda and the Wukong on Corviday. I like this because you're going to see exactly the same thing on both of our teams. Kumba's going to ult, they're going to land down. Ra or Ochita is going to hit the snipe at exactly the right moment. And it's the same on the side of Corviday. Nezhar's going to ult. Coming right back down into a Scylla ult. They have a lot of combos on their teams. I don't really like this Sun Wukong pick though. Sun Wukong just doesn't do a whole lot in the game anymore. It's not necessarily a great pick up here. Uh, it's got some disruption uh, and it's got you know a, a decent laning phase, but I would have preferred to see something more like a Bologna with some more hard CC. Yeah, exactly. Or even a Bologna or a Tear would be good to set up with the Scylla. I mean, you can you can feel us into I'm a Monster. There's a lot of setup potential. Sun Wukong, we'll have to see how it plays out. We'll be jumping into game in just a second. Uh, up against an Odin, you know, Odin very strong early in the game, but going to be looking to rotate uh, onto the Scylla or, or try and catch out Trilogy somewhere in the jungle. I, I really like Team Pandemonium's team composition. I think uh, Corbett is going to really struggle against it. Yeah, exactly. So you, you did mention as well, there are, what, that's, it's almost three gods that can't get out of the cage. KO has to be forced to use the ultimate to get out of the Odin cage, which is, it's a pretty big thing. Other than, I mean, of course he has to, oh, he can't really get out of it. That means that a lot of relics on the side of Corvidate are going to be the Phantom, the new relic in the game uh, that was brought out a few patches ago. So Phantom means that things like Desecrator, he's going to have his, uh, Sentinel to escape out of the cage, but Trilogy is not going to be able to get out. Neither will Caseification. If you see the Phantom, means they're going to have, uh, they won't be able to pick up things like a Sanctuary or a Purification. They're going to be forced to build that uh, Phantom. Exactly right. If, if and that that's a win for Pandemonium. The Odin is applying enough pressure that they sacrifice essentially, as a, essentially sacrifice one of their relic spots for a Phantom. Uh, Subfloor there gets a nice double bounce onto just Speedy, but. He's not going to worry too much about the damage at this stage of the game. Caseification gets a pluck onto Erratic Speedy. Doing some damage there, but a great mez sees him uh, escape most of the pressure. That's what I hate about Kumbakana. That mez seems to last forever. If you're in late and you just walk up and you see a Kumbakana, he just pops that mez. And you are sat there for a solid two plus seconds. You're just like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you know, f at the, the highest rank, it is a three second mesmerization. That is crazy. Uh, mid lane here, Trilogy and Desecrate applying some pressure early here to Ochita and Maxon. Ochita playing that Ra. Ra doesn't really have the, the best damage. Of course, he has his Celestial Beam and that ult once he hits level 5. But until then, with the removal of Power Potion, he doesn't really have that much damage on his kit. And neither does, I mean, Nemesis very, very late game doesn't really have the most damage early. Alright, we can see here Trilogy. Take it to about 50% HP. Maxon's in the minions. The root not on the mark. But that's great. Trilogy taking a lot of damage here. Heals himself up. Uses the sash, but he's got no immunity frames left. Ochita looking for the kill here. Can he find it? Maxon picks it up with a basic attack. Heal coming out for Pandemonium. They're looking for Desecrator now. Who uses his Sentinel to get away. But Trilogy just not respecting the early game damage from Ochita and Maxon. I was literally just saying they have no damage, and then they just take first blood. Well, come on, come on. They have very on. little damage, but, but Trilogy, but they Together, still do though. some damage, and Trilogy just didn't respect it. He was probably listening to you cast, and to be like, oh, they do no damage, great, I could just attack them. <laughs> and now, look at the invade coming through from Max and Ochi, taking away the backhands. This is what I love about Pandemonium. I've said it multiple times when I've casted their games. If Pandemonium can get an invade, and they get an early lead, they snowball like crazy they are probably the best team for snowballing in oce when it comes to in terms of invading and taking away camps and taking away farm and denying farm from the opposing team that they're versing have a look on the right hand side though maxon could be looking to dive onto ko here there's the cage coming down we don't see the divine judgment too yet there it goes but somersault cloud is going to make sure that ko is one happy monkey going to be able to escape under his tower there two ultimates used there for one uh, Pandemonium, just you know, just pressure in the solar lane. They're going to be able to take away some farm here uh, with the fire elementals as well. I suspect they might look for the speed buff here. Ro could look for it if he's a bit daring. It's not it's not flashing just yet, so they're not going to be able to take away that one. Ro gets back into lane and gets a whole lot of farm. Actually, uh, gets there and clears the whole wave before Ko has a chance to. So Ko might lose a few minions to tower. 
Kale's got the blue, uh, the blue uh, stone, yeah. and he's also got the blue boots, stone. So yeah, <laughs> blue stone. Typ typical Sun Wukong builds. I mean, the magic cudgel just does. Uh, it clears the wave. He's what at level six now. He'll be hitting level seven, where he'll basically be able to one hit the wave. And if he doesn't, then you're going to see the masters will clearing it up. <clears throat> Nothing side case occasion. Perhaps looking for a pluck. He's looking very aggressively at both erratic and subfloor. Just clearing the wave now. For now, however. Along with just Speedy, they're doing a decent job of it thus far. Sobek and Neath got very good combination in terms of clear. And they're both full health, full mana, or very close to it anyway. So they could look for some aggression here. Instead, going to go for their boars. It's a good play. Just back away. Just get as much farm as possible. We need, as you said, like, if Neath is not significantly ahead as we move into the mid game or late game, then she's really not going to do anything too much. So Speedy needs to get as much farm, he needs to get as many kills as possible. He's hit level 6, so Subfloor is just a little bit ahead of Subfloor, but he's got a wave there to pick up right hand, no, left hand side actually. We see the mid camps, 3 man, but we see Maxin getting a kill onto KO in solo. Yeah, I mean, Corbett ain't gonna get the left hand side mid camps, but it's kind of Pandemonium's playstyle and been up for a while, even back before uh, you know, Rove moved to the solo lane, it was just, you know, pressure the solo lane, let the solo lane get ahead, and then get him to basically be a raid boss. Subfloor, beads forced out here, Trilogy misses the ultimate onto Erratic, Crush comes out from Desecrator, no CC just yet to lock him in place for the Iron Monster, yes. but Desecrator not pulling it to the trigger, there's the pluck, there's the Iron Monster, and Prox, the combo passive, a great slam through the wall from a cheetah, sees Desecrator dashing into death. And Maxon gets himself double a double kill, kill here. Case vacation down. Lurking in the waters. Trilogy very low as well. Uses the immunity frames, but he's not going to live for too much longer. Maxon triple. gets himself a triple kill here. Case vacation low as well. Dashes away. Maxon dashes after him. He's looking for this quadra. He's hungry for it, but Case vacation should be able to get away under tower before Maxon can clean up the kill. Perfect rotation. Saw the snipe at the start of that, and as soon as Ochita and Maxon were in the fight, they're like, okay. Let's end this. Let's just go for all of these kills. Because everyone was so low. They spent so much trying to kill Erratic in subfloor. And Ochita and Max just recognize that. They're like, they just come in there, use their ultimates, clean up all the kills. Maxon walks out of that one with a triple kill. He's five and oh, five and a half minutes in. Two levels ahead of Trilogy, Husey. Maybe he's going for only good at Solo's record of kills in a game for the OC. <laughs> that would be amazing. He could do it. I mean, he's five and oh. Almost six minutes into this game, he's just finished off Wingblade, so the slows aren't going to affect him nearly as much. Page there from Row onto Ko, but Ko goes up into the Somersault Cloud and is able to uh, get himself away from that one. But the, the cooldown on the Odin Cage is almost half of that on the Sun Wukong uh, Somersault Cloud, so Ro going to be pretty happy with that one. And speaking of the cooldown, it's a common occurrence when we see an Odin on the left hand side though. Neath might be in a little bit of trouble. Oh, Erratic Erratic. Just missing the ult there. It's gonna be down for another 80 seconds, but there goes the Sun's dive bomb's gonna secure it and Subfloor's gonna be able to get that kill onto Speedy. That's not what you want when you're playing Neath and you need to be ahead. Just not great awareness there. Erratic walked in from the jungle behind him. Um, you, you know, Subfloor plays more aggressively when he's got his support coming in nearby, and so it's just not recognizing the matchup you're against. Desecrator, just a little bit uh, too early there on the Iron Monster. Row picks up a kill, Caseification as well, coughs the Divine Judgment from Maxon, but is able to walk away from that one. Desecrator looking to come back in here and try and secure something. Needs ultimate onto Row. There is Row's shield. He locks them down in Page the cage. KO taking a lot of damage. The Summerstock Cloud isn't available. Ochita picks up a kill. Crush comes down. Heal down as well from Ochita. They're fighting Caseification here. There's the pluck. Is the crush coming out from Desecrated? No, it's not. It's on cooldown still. Ochita still somehow alive. Case of Vacation about to fall down here to Ro. Ro picks up a kill. Desecrated gets one onto Ochita. Nowhere to go. Good Mez. A good uh, sanctuary there to keep alive for the moment, but Ro gets himself a double kill. Pandemonium, a very early lead here. 10 to 2, read the kills as we're seven and a half minutes in the game. And they're going to be able to... Wait, no! Oh, Trilogy just took the blue buff with the ring toss. Kao forced to teleport in there, so good play there from Trilogy. But how long were Pandemonium in the jungle for? That all started with uh, Ochita looking for a snipe on the speed buff. He didn't secure it, but then everyone just rotated in. They were so deep in their jungle, and they took so many kills because of it. It's just their playstyle. It's what they learned at Worlds, it's what they learned exactly. from international teams, is, you know, take away from the enemy and then they can't, they can't reach back up to you. Look at the graphs, it's a 4,000 experience difference, 2,500 gold difference as we hit 8 minutes into the game. Pandemonium firmly in control of this game. 
and that's without a gold tree. Mid lane though, Trilogy might be in some trouble. Misses the wind fire wheels ultimate there, and now he might be in some trouble because of Uchida just off the mark, but he uses it to completely negate the pathing for Trilogy. KO gonna be able to rotate in and defend his teammate. Bro, looking for a jump onto KO. Instead, switches his target to Case Vacation. Doesn't manage to get it as the crocodile dashes away. So, uh, Corvide escaping a hairy situation there. I don't think Trilogy missed his wind fire wheels before. I think it was just you looking to use it as an escape. It's probably the best goal. I mean, he did get out of there, so granted he uh, didn't didn't go down. He's 0 and 3. So, another death onto that would really really detriment him and his team. Of course, we did mention in the picks and bands though that Trilogy, even if he is behind, it doesn't really matter because you're using him purely as an alt bot. If you can set up the wind fire wheels with the rest of his team, whether that be Desecrator or even Casification with the lurking in the waters, that's a lot of damage that can be applied in a very small time span. Desecrator, is, he missed one, I um, wants to hit the other one um, earlier in this game. So, you know, warming up, getting just, you know, getting into the swing of playing this character. The later this goes, the more damage he's going to do. Obviously, he's a Scylla, so, you know, very late game oriented mage. It, perfect setup comp as well, pretty much from his team, uh, with the Sobek and the, the Naja. Even the Neath herself provides a lot of setup for the, the Scylla. In mid lane though, Arati gets a three man Mez, but are lurking in the jungles. Doesn't want to really commit too much here in the mid lane. They just invaded the speed buff, so they're going to take that, put it in their back pocket, save that one for later, get a little bit more farm in their hands. Just reaching that 10 minute mark. I'm surprised that Pandemonium, I mean, they've gone for these invades. It's been very successful, but if they're this far ahead and they know they can win the fights, why haven't they gone for a gold fury, Husey? I think they just don't have the damage or the, the secure at the moment to really make it worth it. They've got a lot of sustain for Ochita, uh, from Ochita and his, his snipe, but when they've won these fights, he's used that snipe uh, to pick up a kill or two or to, to help his teammates get some kills. So they haven't really been confident enough that they'll have the damage to, to secure the Gold Fury, you know, but, because by the time they've got it low enough, Corvide probably would have respawned given how early in the game it is, and they might not be able to... They just don't want to risk a seal from, from a, a Scylla, is pretty much it. Or from a Sobek. Look on the right-hand side, though. Roe might be in some trouble. He's got four members, but Casification and Trilogy just like, no, I don't want to deal with that. They're going back to mid lane because they recognize the Gold Fury that's going down right now on the left-hand side of Radic, doing a good job at zoning, but Pandemonium take themselves the first Gold Fury of the game. KO looking for a cheater here, forcing off in the Somersault Cloud just barely seconds before he falls down. I'm a I monster. Want to desecrate and looking there, gets one kill onto Subfloor. Yeah, Corvide, this is their fight. Second one just barely misses Maxon there. I don't know how he missed that one. It looked like it hit on my screen, but Maxon able to walk away there. So a kill going the way of Corvide, but the Gold Fury forced to Team Pandemonium. That was a perfect play there from Roe. We saw at the start of that one, Roe was like, okay, I'm going to take this buff and zone away two members. Four members recognized that, and then they completely split the team off. In that time, Pandemonium were doing the Gold Fury. Perfect communication, and the micro play from Pandemonium getting two things done at once. Pandemonium, one of our three teams already confirmed for land. Row thinks in the mid lane there, uses the cage, but still chasing after Desecrator here. Desecrator 50% so HP. There's the Sanctuary. Trilogy sashes Row and Row falls down with his overextension here. Desecrator still alive. Pandemonium feeling themselves just a little bit too much. Left hand side though, just Speedy. No support available for him. Backflip is down and Maxon is here. Good root there from just Speedy, but the dashes from Maxon are better. Speedy, nowhere to run. Neath ultimate, but subfloor picks up the kill with a ricochet. Caseification plucks in erratic. There's no damage to follow it up. The Nemesis ultimate is here as well. Caseification rooted in place. Subfloor gets himself a double kill. He's looking for a triple onto Trilogy, who slowed down, uses his purification to try and get away from Maxon and subfloor. Down come the Suns. Trilogy he just barely alive at this point. Erratic, though, picks up the kill with the Kumbakana. But have a look, though. We might be seeing Desecrator coming in. He doesn't have the Iron Monster. Some sick not going to hit either. He might actually get turned on here. Forced uh, Sentinel over the wall does have that mark, but Ricochet not going to be applied. Everyone is low on Pandemonium, but they did take out a fair few kills. They took out three kills for that. Meanwhile, on the right-hand side, we did see KO split push that T1 tower. So, hey, he's one lane. Take a look at the graphs now, 5,500, the experience, 3,300, the gold, all in favor of Team Pandemonium. 13 minutes into the game, 13 kills for the Pandas. 
It's a very, very big lead, and it's only going to get more in their favor. I'm I'm looking on the on the side of Corbett. I don't see any big anti-healing on the side of uh, whether that be items or um, relics. Ochita does a lot in heals. Have a look on the left-hand side. Kays might be in some trouble there. There's the big bird bomb himself coming down on throw. Three-man knock-up. Kays in so much trouble there. Gets cleaned up there by Maxon and the rest of Pandemonium. Easy four-man rotation. And now they're looking to dive the mid-tier one. Trilogy's got nowhere to run uh, except upwards, apparently, with the ultimate Ochita offline. Missed what? time to snipe there. Trilogy's still alive. Immunity frames onto Max and Maxon. Forced to use the purification to dash away here. Erratic very low into the Kumbakana. Passive is T uh, looking to try and keep him alive, but it's not going to happen. Just Speedy picked up a kill back onto Pandemonium. So, you know, Corbinet, they're definitely punishing these overextensions for Pandemonium. They're countering rather than initiating. Exactly. That's the second time we've seen Pandemonium go for a tier 1 tower invade. They've had Ro, the engager, for that entire time. He just puts the shield down, uh, the cage, should I say, and then expects his team to follow up. Corvidae recognize that, and that's the second time that they have come out on top of a tier 1 tower dive. And they take at least one, maybe two members from it each time. The, heat bears down upon you. the mid lane has definitely been the focus of this game for Team Pandemonium. That's where most of their kills have originated from. Desecrator and Case Vacation, they're going to be able to secure these right-hand side mid harpies. You know, the more farm they can get for Desecrator, the better. He's actually ahead of Ochita at the moment in terms of both gold and experience. So doing a fairly decent job for himself. You know, he, he's been hitting pretty hard in these fights. If we take a look at the damage, he's actually just only on halfway. I guess he hasn't been getting out a lot of poke in lane, but in his team fights, he's managed to get his abilities to land. Right hand side, we just saw the cage and the somersault cloud trade once again. We do mention the cooldowns. It's it's a pretty big cooldown. I mean, that's going to be up in another 30 seconds. So Cage is going to be up as soon as they go for another fight. And that's perfect timing for when this next Gold Fury is going to spawn, Husey. Another 30 seconds on that one. Yes, yeah, so that looks to be the site of contention <clears throat> next. Just Speedy here, oblivious as Ro, just walking behind Blink. him. There is the backflip. Now comes the Cage from Ro if he's looking to secure this kill. Actually, he's not even wanting to burn it. He's confident enough in himself and his teammate. Actually, he didn't even have the cage on live. I thought that was just a big man play there from Rowe. Just not willing to burn the cage. Saying, oh, subfloor will get the kill anyway. Turns out it was on cooldown, but whatever. It's still going to result in a tier 1 tower on the left-hand side for Team Pandemonium. Almost 16 minutes into this game. Gold Fury's now respawned. Left-hand side tier 1 tower fell down to the hands of subfloor. Trilogy's rotated and misses the sash. And Pandemonium just looking deep in the jungle here. Red buff is going to respawn very, very soon. They could look to go for another invade here. KO already trying to dive here. He's got that tiger form down. Cage is down to low. He has no somersault cloud. He's going to fall down to Maxon in the mid lane. They're diving the tier one once again. Searing pain going to connect with Desecrator. And he's all the way in the back line. Erratic not going to be able to hit that ultimate. Trilogy rooted in place here. Doesn't get the ring toss to connect. Around he actually blinked into the tier 2 tower and looked to pick up that kill onto Desecrator but couldn't fight it. Gold Fury now being started up here. So a big swing in favor of Team Pandemonium if they can secure this one in terms of gold and experience putting themselves even more ahead. Under 50% HP. Trilogy looking to come in and steal this one. He doesn't have a Wrath available so I'm not sure what he's going to try and steal it with. Pandemonium secure on the backside of the Wrath used by Maxon. Up in the air goes Trilogy. Comes back down with self but Trilogy nowhere to run my friend. Divine Judgment in combination with the rest of the team secures the kill for Team at Pandemonium. 17 to 5 reads the scoreline as we hit 17 minutes in the game. 8,700 is the experience. 6,500 the gold. This is just perfect play. At the very start, they invaded one camp, and it's just snowballed from there. They've taken two Gold Furies now. They have a very, very big lead, as you've just mentioned. Just look at the bit, the item builds as well. We see, uh, what's that? Like, a, a whole item ahead is Subfloor. He's just finished off that Executioner. He already has the Assai. Uh, compared to Speedy, Speedy's gone for the, the Transcendence, also the Soul Eater route. Why do you reckon he's gone for Soul Eater over the Assai? The Soul Eater is still a, a decent item despite its recent nerfs. It gives you extra attack speed. He doesn't have any attack speed online at the moment. It actually gives you more attack speed than RC, I believe, or maybe the same. It gives you 20% lifesteal, however. Doesn't give you penetration like RC, but the stack's the most important thing. Uh, it gives you more movement speed um, per stack. It gives you 0.5% movement speed per stack with a max of 20 stacks. If you take damage when you're below, uh, if you take damage to put you below 25% health, you restore 1% of your maximum health for, uh, per stack. So you can receive a bonus of your uh, 20. You can receive a bonus of 20% of your health back. So 
if he falls down below 25% HP, he's gonna get some health back. So he's just looking to survive a little bit longer. We can see the Solid actually gets propped there. Subfloor goes aggressive onto Just Speedy here as there's a fight breaking out over on the right hand side. Searing Pain just off the mark there. Should he oh. manage to juke out of the way of that one? Max and still looking to deal some damage. Dashes away from the Scylla damage. Tiger 4 from KO not gonna be on the mark. Row blinks in. Cage Trilogy up in the air. His survival is only temporary, however, as he comes crashing down. Ochita picks up the kill there with a Celestial Beam. Max in the shield. Hazification plucks back. Erratic. I'm on Monster Lands. Erratic falls down. Need ultimate there to secure the kill again, but KO going to be credited with that one. Case Vacation lurking in the waters, doesn't land any of the damage there, and now Case Vacation's in trouble himself. Maxon, he's chasing him. Ro jumps over the wall, but Maxon gets the kill. Desecrator looking to run somewhere. Sentinels away from Ochita and Ro. Maxon dashing in here as well, but Blood. Desecrator nowhere to run except for his tower. Dead. He's going to get obliterated there. Ro going to be granted with that one. That's his fifth kill of the game. Mid lane, we see a teleport coming through from KO. They could look to take this one and also try and take the kill onto K. He has no Somersault Cloud. He's in a lot of trouble surrounded by four members. That's going to be a ricochet stun. And that's going to be KO's fourth death of the game. Tier 2 tower is going to fall down. Left hand side, we do see the split push from Speedy. But the mid lane Phoenix is going to fall down quicker than that one. Yep, the split push from just Speedy, but not going to work out here. Trilogy is well trying oh, to defend no. this tower. Just a meat shield here, but one that was torn apart quickly by the barrage there from Team Pandemonium. They're looking to take this tier, this uh, Phoenix in the mid lane. Goodness, a Phoenix pre-20 minutes falls to Team Pandemonium. Speedy does get the tier 2 tower. Trying to back here. Radix here to prevent him, however. And Speedy needs to be very careful here. If Radix can hold him in lane for long enough, the rest of Pandemonium can rotate over and kill him. Don't see any wards, so we won't be seeing a teleport from Royal. Of course, his teleport's down for another 80 seconds. I think Speedy will be fairly safe here. Erratix, uh, Kumba Khan does a bit of damage with his ult. He does a bit of damage with the <laughs> knockback, so... Uh, Speedy's just going to be able to walk away there. He got tier 1 and tier 2 tower, but was it worth it? They lost a lot of members in the mid lane. They lost the tier 2 and the Phoenix. That's going to be down for quite some time, and they're going to have to have always some person defending that lane from the fire minions. Maxon, 8, 0, and 10. Woo! Part of 18 of these 22 kills. Absolutely incredible uh, debut back in the jungle, or return to the jungle rather than the debut, I should say. Have a look on the right-hand side, though. We see a few more buff invades. The ward battle has once again begun on the right-hand side. The fire giant is up for contention here, but I think Pandemonium are going to play it smart. They're just going to invade. The blue buff has just respawned. Actually, they're just going for structure at this point. Ro is doing a, a good job at zoning away here. They've got a very good siege composition with the Ra and, um, well, just mainly with the Ra, in fact. Uh, exactly. The Ro as well on the Odin, a very effective zoning tool with the cage. They take the T1, they, they melt that down like it was butter. There's really nothing a T1 can do against Subfloor, who has uh, the, the penetration from both Arsai and Executioner. Look though, we could see a bit of a fight here. Good stun there from onto Speedy. Actually, the three-man mares and they're diving the tower. Roy's gonna blink over the wall. They're diving onto Speedy here. There's the cage. There's the divine judgment, and the suns have come down upon you. Speedy falls down here, desecrated, the only one available to really deal any damage here. KO forced up in the Somersault Cloud, I'm a monster! Desecrator picks up a kill onto Max and Corbidae, looking to turn this one, but Desecrator taking so much damage there, off the mark with his second strike of I'm a monster. Case of Cation actually plucks Ro out of the crush there, but that was just to keep him away from Ke Desecrator. Anyway, Trilogy very low here, caught in the bomb, doesn't fall oh. down, but Subfloor picks up KO Trilogy. Falls down to Row there after a jump, a Goomba stomp onto his head. Pandemonium here, gonna heal up and then look to pressure oh. down the right-hand side Phoenix. Yeah, they'll be able to take this one fairly easily. Desecrator and K is the only members who can defend this. Desecrator doesn't have Iron Monster for another 60 seconds. And that cage is going to be up in another 9 seconds. So uh, they can look to fight again. Best call here, just take the Phoenix. They have the sustain. Speedy's just respawned there, so they need to take this and get out as fast as they can. There's the cage once again coming down. There isn't really too much follow-up, and Ochita might be in some trouble there. Good sick, and Crush gonna get avoided by the Aegis Amulet or the Sanctuary now. Erratic, just trying to run away, gets plucked right back into the members of Corvidae. They could be able to find him here. He ults onto Speedy, and that enables him to get away. Desecrated, not able to secure him down with a root. 25 to 7 reads the scorecard. 13,000 experience, 10,000 the gold, all in favor of Team Pandemonium. Just look at the plays. 
So you did mention the kills, but have a look on the uh, look at the KDA of both everyone on Pandemonium. So six, one, and ten is Ro. He's part of sixteen kills out of twenty-five. Nine kills, ten assists on Max, and two kills, fifteen assists on Ochita. They've been working together so well. Their, the comp is just amazing, and the teamwork is just next level everyone has been a part of almost every kill you don't really see anyone on pandemonium going by themselves it's one unit they are a strong unit when they fight in these games fire giant here started up by team pandemonium it's already at 75 percent hp bro actually they're a little bit of misplay knocked up there by the the fire giant 50 percent hp looking to secure it speedy doesn't get here Easy. in time to, to seal it away, KO's teleported in, and now Corvide forced to run away here. Speedy gets the Divine Judgment Ultimate, tries to heal up a little bit, but doesn't able to get anything at all. Maxon dashing after him, dashes through him, and picks up the kill. KO up in the Somersault Cloud and immediately jumps away. Good cage there by Rogue. Oh, no. no escape for the Croc and the Monkey. Looking to take them down now is the rest of Team Pandemonium up into the air. Erratic flings up one. Maxon picks up KO. Caseification lurking in the waters. Looking to deal some damage here, but the rest of Pandemonium gets away from all that damage. Ochita and Subfloor going to take down this middle Phoenix. Two Phoenixes down for Corviday. Two of their team members, and now it looks like their Titan is going to be falling down here in just a moment. They have a minion wave when Firewheels is going to come down. I'm a monster charged up by Desecrate. It's going to come down. Searing Pain is going to connect as well. Ochita finds one onto Trilogy. And now Maxon just lurking around here. They could be able to end here. It's very, very low. Titan just over 50% HP. Suns are down to zone away. And less than 50% HP. Rose tanking it up. They have minions pouring in from both the mid and the right lane. Desecrator under the fountain is going to be zoned away. But it's not to any prevail. Pandemonium going to take away game number one. I mean, the